Uh, hello, everybody. When we mention the, the phrase discrete reinforcement, the first thing that comes to mind is fibers. Okay. Um, so fibers are typically used in concrete in order to control cracking and also increase um, um, the energy, the energy absorption capacity of concrete or, 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 or its toughness. Um, fibers typically do not make concrete stronger. Um, and also, a shortcoming of fiber is that when we use too much of it, it will affect the workability of concrete significantly. Then we have to use super plasticizers or change our mixed proportions accordingly. Okay. So what motivated this study is that can we come up with some better or more effective type of um, discrete reinforcement? So the outline of the presentation is here. Um, first, I will talk a little bit about uh, fibers and the mechanism of crack control in concrete. And then I will introduce the concept of needles. Uh, I will say what's, what are the similarities between fibers and needles? What is the main difference between two uh, reinforcing materials? And also uh, tell you what are the properties of effective needles. Um, then I will present an experimental study that we have done using pultruded needles. And then uh, a case study that we did on non-pultruded needles. Both of them are made with FRP, GFRP materials. When a crack intersects a fiber and the crack is growing in width, the fiber has only two options. First option is that it pulls out of its groove. Okay? And the second option is that it breaks. The fiber may break during the pull-out process. So most of the fibers that are intersected by a crack uh, make an angle with the crack surface. Most of the time, they're not perpendicular to the surface of the crack. And so in order for a fiber to pull out of the groove, it has to bend at this zone, at the zone which is on the surface of the crack. Even the most stiff fibers bend, steel fibers bend at the surface of the crack. And this bending, in addition to the friction between the fiber and, and the concrete matrix results in energy absorption. As a result, when, for example, look at this beam that we are testing in four-point setup. When the load reaches its maximum value, concrete will not break into two separate pieces. It will continue to absorb energy. And the behavior would be what you can see here, right? the load versus displacement, okay? So again, all fibers bend. If they don't bend, there will be no pull out. So the question is that, what if we design a fiber which is very, very stiff so that it does not bend, and also very strong so that it does not break, okay? If we can design such a fiber, we call it a needle. Right? So needles, I mean, in real life, you don't have a material which is 100% stiff, OK? So needles bend, but just a little bit. And in this picture, I'm demonstrating how a needle works when it is intersected by, by a crack. So as you can see in the second picture, in order for the crack to be able to grow in width, the concrete matrix surrounding the needle needs to crumble okay, or spells. Okay? Otherwise, it will not grow anymore, and new cracks will start somewhere else and will be intersected by new needles. Okay?
So again, before I move on, that is what a needle means. It bends a little bit and it's very strong. It does not break. It does not really pull out. In terms of aspect ratio, um, fibers, the commercial fibers that we use, have typically an aspect ratio of 50 or more. This is a high aspect ratio, and we need high aspect ratio because high aspect ratio results in a higher friction and more energy absorption during crack opening, right? Um, however, since needles do not pull out, we really don't care about the bond between the needles and the surrounding matrix, okay? What really controls the mechanism of crack, crack opening is the stiffness of the needle, not, not the bond between the needle and concrete, okay? So for that reason, we don't need the needles to have a high aspect ratio. The needles that I will show you and we investigated in our lab has an aspect ratio of about 17. Okay. And that is very helpful. <coughs> Large aspect ratio of fibers results in what we call balling or agglomeration. When you put too much you know, fibers in concrete, they start to agglomerate, and it is very difficult to distribute them uniformly within con concrete matrix. All right, so I'm going to talk about the first experimental program that we did on pultruded. Uh, GFRP uh, needles that we obtain by cutting GFRP rebars. And uh, we measured the impact of the needles on some of the fresh and mechanical and hardened properties of concrete. Okay? So, you know, when these GFRP rebars are produced, um, the, the, the factory is left with a certain amount of waste, sometimes up to 5% of, of the rebars that are produced are turned into, into waste. They are good quality material, but since they are a bit short, uh, they are difficult to, to sell. So that was our original goal, to see how we can deal with this kind of waste. So the first idea that came to our mind was to, and again, sorry, before I move on to tell you about the idea, um, you know, these rebars are used a lot for reinforcement of concrete, as, as you know better than I do. They are most used in cold regions where a lot of the icing salts are used, or in, you know, coastal and humid regions where the probability of corrosion is very high. Okay. They have a steady and growing market. And, you know, here in this table, you know, I am showing you some of the mechanical properties of these GFRP rebars. They are usually twice as strong as a steel and four times lighter. So very attractive mechanical properties. The tensile modulus of elasticity is, is slightly lower than, than steel. So the first thing that came to our mind in order to deal with this waste was to cut them into aggregate size pieces and use them as a replacement of coarse aggregate in concrete. Okay, we even thought about decorative concrete as you can see in the pictures below. Um, which was not the best idea. First of all, cutting these things, you know, into aggregates is very time and energy consuming. And secondly, after we tested these um, concretes with these GFRP aggregates, we realized that the compressive strength and the tensile strength is lower than the control concrete with crushed stone. And the main reason is the smooth, relatively smooth surface of uh, these GFRP aggregates. Okay, so the compressive and tensile strength reduced by about 20%. So we thought, and you know, if you want to learn more about what we did, this is, you know, the, the paper that we have published about these GFRP aggregates. So we thought, how can we, you know, recycle these rebars so that we use less energy, less time, and come up with something that actually enhances the properties of concrete rather than making it worse. So we came up with the idea of needles, okay? These as you can see, these are the dimensions of the needles that, that we produce, and they, they are like the size of cigarettes. 
Okay? So they are quite larger than, than fibers typically used in concrete. So, and we decided to put them in concrete and see how they affect properties of concrete. So, in our initial work, we made three types of concrete mixes. The first one, first column, is the control one. In the second one, we replaced 5% of the coarse aggregate by volume by these needles. And in the second one, we replaced 10% by volume of the coarse aggregates with the needles. Um, as you can see, everything else is almost the same in the other two. Um, two mixes. Okay, so the mixes are very similar, and we, we had to use a little bit more superplasticizer in in the needle incorporated ones. And yes, we carry down with our test. But before I move on, I would like you to look at um, this uh, the second to the last. Uh, um, uh, row, which tells you about the volumetric dosage of, of, of these needles in concrete. 1.76, 3.52. Since we always compare with fibers, this dosage is a little bit high, okay? We don't use more than, typically we don't use more than 1% fiber in concrete. It's typically 0.5%. So volumetrically speaking, the dosage is a little bit high. Okay, so we did a number of tests, compressive strengths, splitting tensile strengths, and modulus of elasticity, and also, you know, energy absorption capacity based on a ASTM C1609. Right? And these are the results for, you know, ten, comp the first one is compressive, tensile strengths, and modulus of elasticity. Uh, not much impact on compressive strengths, a little bit reduction, but significant improvement in splitting tensile strengths. Replacing 5% of coarse aggregate with these needles increased tensile strengths 22%. Replacing 10% of coarse aggregate with needles increased tensile strength 33%. That's significant. And one of the things that we were worried about was the, you know, workability and fresh properties. We were worried that when we put these big needles in concrete, you know, they may disintegrate, they may go to one side. And so, I'm not sure, hopefully I can play this for you. All right, so this is after concrete came out of the mixer, and you can see the needles inside, all right? So as you can see, they are uniformly distributed in concrete, okay? And we had no problem with the fresh concrete at all, right? So, okay, and this is, you know, a, a specimen after testing. You can see again that the distribution is quite good. And this is an interesting picture. When you test a, a regular concrete without any fiber or needle, like in the one, one in the left picture, concrete splits into two separate pieces immediately after reaching the peak load. As you can see in the second picture, where 10% of coarse aggregate was replaced by needles, it, the, the, the cross-section has changed from circular to oval, but still, it's maintaining its integrity. The cylinder is still in one piece. Okay. And here you can see load versus displacement. You know, the, 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 the control specimens after failure, the load drop, but the other ones continue to carry load. So a significant improvement in, in toughness, in tension. And this is the, the flexural test. You can see here strain hardening behavior. Okay, which is very valuable. Most of the time, fibers do not give us a strain hardening behavior. Right? So again, if you want to learn more about this study, we have published a paper in ASC Journal of Materials in Civil Engineering that fully describes the, the study. All right, the second study is about non protruded needles. Again, motivation for us was um, managing waste, managing GFRP waste. And we basically cut off wind blades into needles. Um, 
as you may know, uh, most of wind turbine blades are made of GFRP. Sure, I have one time. Ten minutes. All right. And the service life, the design life of a wind turbine blade is only 20 years. Sometimes they change these blades even before 20 years. Why? Because newer, better, more efficient desi designs come to the market and they just replace it because they can make more money with it. Okay? Most of these blades are, most parts of the blade are made with GFRP. And please note that in most of the states in United States, including New York, uh, wind blades have been around for less than 20 years. And the no number of wind farms are increasing significantly. So in the future, we will have an issue with managing the waste from uh, these blades that produce something we call renewable energy. You know, the blade part is not that renewable. Right, so we took a piece of blade, we cut it into these square pieces first, and then we cut them into needles. We produce two types of needles. As you can see, some of them are grooved, you know, on the surface, and some of them were plain. And, you know, we produce concrete batches very similar to the previous study, 5% and 10% replacement of coarse aggregate. And you know, this is the result from ASTM C1609, okay? They are not as good as pultruded needles, but they are still not too bad. Um, they still make concrete very tough. And when we re re read the literature, we realized that when you put a dosage of 0.25% of the steel fibers in concrete, you get similar toughness, okay? So it can compete with some dosages of, uh, of the steel fibers as well. Um, they did not change the compressive and splitting tensile strengths of concrete, but they had some in in improvement on toughness. And we was wondering why, you know, both of them are very strong, good materials. Uh, both the needles from wind blades and the ones from pultrusion. So we put these needles in the oven, we burned off the resin, and we looked at the direction of the glass fibers. Most of the fibers in, in wind blade needles were like this picture. The fibers were perpendicular to the axis of the needle, and as a result, the tensile strength of such a needle would be very small. Okay. Some of them were like the second picture, in which, you know, most of the fibers were along the axis of the needle. But in the third one, this is pultruded, you know, pultrusion guarantee that all the fibers are along the axis. And here, you know, uh, this is a, uh, a beam, this is a cracked surface, a fractured surface, when we look at these needles that has been broken during testing, when we zoom in, we can see that the fibers are perpendicular to the axis of the needle, okay, which reduces tensile strength significantly. And this is the last picture that I'm presenting, but it kind of verifies our theory that in order for a crack to open, when it is bridged by a needle, um, the concrete surrounding the needle should crumble or sla or spells. Okay. All right. So my concluding re remarks are, are as follows. Okay. Uh, we have to do more studies. Okay. These are just some preliminary studies. Uh, we have to test different needles with different geometries and different compositions. Um, we have to look at contribution to the contribution of needles to other properties of concrete, such as shear strengths. And also we have to look at the durability of needles in concrete. At the end, I would like to thank Doug very much for uh, providing us with the protruded sections and a lot of technical information. Um, that's what all I have. I would be happy to answer questions. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Very nice presentation and innovative ideas. Uh, however, I have a question about the aspect ratio. Right. When we use steel fiber, the aspect ratio has a, a great effect on the properties. Now, how much was the aspect ratio for the needle, right. the, the first? Uh, right. Right. So, as I mentioned, you know, aspect ratios of fibers are around 50. Um, these needles, the aspect ratio was 17, much smaller. And as I also mentioned, um, we need high aspect ratios for fibers because during the pullout, we want to have a good bond between them so that, you know, when they pull out, there is a lot of friction and a lot of energy is absorbed. But for needles, uh, the, the important factor is not really the bond. It's the stiffness of the needle. As long as it doesn't bend, it is very difficult for a crack to open. Um, second thing is, like, when you have different diameters. Right. So are you going by diameters or you cut the same rebar into pieces? Uh, because if you have a, like a waist of, let's say, 12 millimeter diameter of right. FRP of, and then you have 16, then 20. So, right. so you know, um, first of all, we use the smallest possible, uh, rebar in terms of diameter. Okay. If we wanted to use larger ones, yes. you know, the, the length would be larger in order to get the same aspect ratio. So, uh, you know, what, 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 I like this question because it uh, brings the idea that needles do not have to be from recycling waste materials. So if they are proved to be good materials, we can ask, you know, companies, pultrusion companies, to produce needles with the desired diameters that we look for. I think that the needles that I tested in the lab are too big. Okay, as I said, it's the size of a cigarette. Yes. So, for example, it's good for applications such as the slabs on ground, but if you want to use them in a column, you know, the needles may get stuck in between the steel reinforcement, right? But there is another issue, you know, if you reduce the diameter of the needles, you also reduce the stiffness of, of the needles, and the stiffness is primary. So we are doing more tests, you know, in our lab right now, different diameters and different lengths to see how much we can reduce the diameter so that we still have a very good stiffness, so that the bending uh, along the crack would be minimal. Thank you very much. Sure. We, we deliberately produced them in, in 120, 100 and 125 diameter, two or two and a quarter inch, mm -hmm. if you would be interested in having some of those in the, in the tests. Right. This happened to be basalt. I'm big on the basalt. Right, right. Yes, so we are, right now we are testing, you know, uh, needles from diameters one inch, uh, one millimeter, all the way to five millimeters. We are a little bit, you know, skeptical about one diameter. We are not sure because we don't know how stiff it is when crossed by a, uh, by a crack. So, yes, one millimeter might be good, but we have to do a lot of testing to find that out. All right, thank you.